concept of multiples price based multiples which generally uh, come into the categories uh, of tools like uh, price to earnings ratio or price to book value so some kind of price based multiples today these are the most powerful tools or most widely used tools as far as uh, the valuation of the security is concerned so uh, dealing with uh, how in what way we derive these uh, uh, price multiples and how do we use them as a part of uh, the price determination process or valuation process of the security is what we are going to see in our uh, uh, in in the current session so to start with when we are talking about a multiple as i have uh, just now indicated they are primarily in the form of ratios the most commonly used one being a price to earnings kind of a multiple now using that multiple if i have to go for a valuation i am using a mechanisms uh, how do i identify let's say for this company for this particular security what is the appropriate p by e multiple for that we are talking about two different mechanisms how do i identify this p by e multiple a of uh, let's say 10 is suitable for company x for that the mechanisms that we are talking of is one is a method of comparables you identify let's say i am talking about a stock x try to identify all those companies which have a similar behavior as stock x probably a b c companies which have similar behavior It means probably from the same industry same type of risk structure so uh, you you take those securities which have similar behavior of stock x or probably the index the industry index if if x is a bank then uh, the banking index if x is an automobile in uh, automobile industry then probably automobile index like that the industry sector specific uh, index so any such uh, such uh, scenario you take all those companies and uh, find out the multiple of each of those companies find out the multiples of each of those companies by understanding their specific prices and uh, let's say their specific earnings i'm just taking p by e as one such kind of a multiple you find out uh, for each of the company and probably use some kind of a calculation on the top of it some kind of arithmetic on the top of it finally to say for this company this is the justified p by e ratio justified multiple you look at a series of companies which are comparable with this particular company or you take an index which can be compared with this uh, which is more or less in line with this company find out the multiple for that particular index or for particular uh, series of companies use some kind of a calculation and say that this is the benchmark value this is the benchmark value for the multiple as far as this company is concerned so because we are using uh, the comparable companies uh, and deciding the multiple of those companies to be similar to this because companies which are more or less uh, in the similar uh, industry what we expect is Uh, 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 their their price to the earnings ratio should be more or less on the same lines because uh, uh, when companies are performing more or less uh, similarly, their pricing pattern should also be more or less on a similar lines. So with that kind of an assumption, we see that even though irrespective of the size of the company, the P by E or P by B B or any such kind of uh, multiple. should be more or less consistent within the industry under that kind of an assumption uh, we are going ahead uh, choosing the similar uh, comparable firms finding out the number 
for those comparables and then using that number as the benchmark that is what we call as a justified multiple using the method of comparables the other thing is the method of forecasted fundamentals here i don't look at uh, any other competitor or anything here using uh, the uh, the garden growth or any other models any other discounted cash flow based models we have identified the the formula for price what should be the price the value d1 by r minus g or fcff1 by vac minus g some such kind of uh, formulas right <coughs> using this when i say p by e i divide this by e and finally uh, probably this will give me the dividend payout dividend payout ratio divided by r minus c this is the way i define the multiple for a firms when i am going with a forecasted fundamental so forecasted payout ratio what is the forecasted payout ratio for this company what is the forecasted uh, required rate of return on equity for this uh, stock what is the expected uh, growth rate for this particular stock using these kind of uh, uh, using these kind of uh, forecasted numbers for the futures we are going to find out uh, the ratios for those kind of uh, companies the multiples for those kind of companies that is what is the forecasted fundamentals uh, based uh, approach uh, uh, that is what we take as the forecasted fundamentals uh, kind of a uh, approach uh, wherein you don't uh, really compare any kind of comparable firms or nothing like that you can directly uh, use uh, the the projected fundamentals about this company and then get into the valuation process so straight forward the usage of the formulas once you know what is the value using an appropriate uh, method divided by the earnings will which will uh, give you the uh, the the p by e ratio based on the fundamentals now here earnings if i am taking for the past one year last one year we call it as trailing p by e ratio but if i am taking the earnings per share for the forecasted expected for next year we call it as leading p by e ratio we just need to understand the difference between the leading and the trailing p by e ratios trailing is based on the earnings of the past year whereas leading is the earnings based on the earnings of the current year but whatever is it uh, the multiple is playing a key role in terms of the valuation process now in this multiples again if i am using the comparables see first thing i need to know is what is justified multiple depending on the method that i am using if i am using method of comparables probably some comparable stocks some kind of uh, arithmetic on those comparable stocks can decide what is my benchmark multiple or justified multiple but when i am going with uh, the forecasted fundamentals approach whatever uh, the p by e that is coming through this formula based uh, mechanism that is what we are calling as a justified multiple now what we say is we look at the actual multiple right now we start looking at actual multiple and compare it with the justified multiple justified could be either based on uh, the the comparables approach or it could be uh, based on uh, the uh, the va fundamentals uh, based valuation approach whatever it is you find out uh, the justified uh, multiple compare it if the actual is lesser than the justified we say that that particular stock is uh, undervalued otherwise we go with uh, that particular stock being overvalued and if the justified is same as uh, the actual then probably we can say that it is 
equally a, a fair valued kind of a security now how do i get into the justified values using using the fundamentals itself okay let's uh, look at uh, the most common i'll come back to this otherwise the most common multiples that we are typically are talking of is the p by e ratio which is a uh, price to the earnings and if i am talking about the earnings of the last four quarters or last one year we call it as a trailing p by e if i am taking uh, the earnings per share for the next four quarters we call it as leading p by e ratio otherwise price to sales very common the price per share divided by the sales per share price to book value same thing price per share divided by the book value per share then we have price to cash flow the same way in all these kind of cases if the ratio is much much higher compared to the competitors or compared to the justified what is required so if at all we see that the actual is much higher compared to the justified we say that that particular stock is uh, overvalued otherwise we say that it is undervalued and one more thing nowadays uh, that we are looking at under this price multiples kind of an approach is the expected dividend yield whatever is the dividend that is going to be expected in the next one year divided by the market price so dividend yield is nothing but whatever is the dividend that is expected to be de declared divided by the price means what is the return that the investor is physically going to get in the next one year going as a part of the dividend yield so all these values we can get them directly from the market because price is something that i mean if i want the actual values the price can be obtained directly from the market whereas uh, all these things the sales the book values all these things will come from the corresponding uh, financial statements so obtaining these ratios uh, uh, which get updated on a day to day basis is a quite comfortable kind of a task itself but how do i find out the justified values for these things especially using the fundamentals see justified values using the comparables is quite easy because i just need to select a few competing uh, companies for this do some kind of arithmetic on those numbers and i can uh, arrive at a justified value of those multiples but when i am uh, looking at uh, fundamentals based justified value these are the formulas that we are talking of how am i arriving at these formulas let's look at it if i want p by e ratio right we know that p is going with the dividend discounting model p is nothing but d1 by r minus z now when i want leading p by e i am dividing it by e1 so what is happening d1 by e1 is nothing but payout ratio expected payout ratio divided by r minus z this is what is the leading p by e ratio from the fundamentals so i will forecast what is going to be the future payout i will forecast what is going to be the future uh, required rate of return and the required growth and the uh, and the expected growth rate based on which i will decide that this is going to be the justified p by e multiple for the security the other way of uh, looking at it if i want trailing p by e same p is still the same d1 by r minus z but instead of dividing by e1 i am dividing by e0 which is the historical or la last earnings per share so d1 i'll write it as d0 into 1 plus z divided by e0 into r minus z which is giving me d0 by e0 is the current payout ratio so i'll say payout into 1 plus z 